In this video, we're going to run through going over um, making section cuts for building sections and then developing a wall section and going through the two-dimensional annotation tools that we have to do that. Um, all right, so to, to cut a building section, I'm going to aim to cut straight through here. I'll actually delete this one. Yep. And we're going to go to View, Section. You have some options. You have building section or detail. We're going to do building section. Cut all the way through. Um, what it's showing here is it shows the extents of what it's looking at. We can control that. You can also control that in the view properties, but it, the visual way to do it is to come to a plan and click on the section and you'll be able to control steps. So if I double click on the head of this, it'll actually take me into this um, building section. And um, yeah, so you're seeing you're seeing a lot of information. This is all 3D information. None of this is 2D of what's being cut. Uh, first thing to probably do looks like we're actually cutting something above us. Is I'm going to crop the view down to just the part of the building that we want to see. And you can play around with the um, detail level here. Medium will start to show what your walls are made out of. So depending on what kind of view you're looking at, you might want to do that. Then you can start by actually cutting wall sections out of your building section so people can see where these wall sections are coming from and um, to develop it further. So I'm going to actually use the call-out feature right in this view. I'm going to do a rectangle, and we're going to develop this wall section right here. So if I double-click on that head, it takes me into this wall section. All right, so a few things um, once you start getting into this. This is at a half-inch scale. That seems reasonable for this size. Um, we're going to start working with two-dimensional tools in order to get all this to work. Uh, a couple things. This looks like it's already joined together. Typically, things are not. So I'm going to unjoin this so you can see what it looks like. That's what it would look like if it was the floor slab and the wall together. But it's not really. So sometimes it's good to get your geometry working well to actually go for, to join. So it's pretty obvious that the structure is sitting on the CMU wall. And now what we're going to do to this wall section to start to develop it is make it have real CMU and brick coursing. <coughs> and to do that, we go to the annotate tab and um, we can do a repeating detail component. Let me see what we have loaded in. We have brick loaded in. So the way it works is repeating detail component, brick, and I'll come down here and click. And then if I hit tab, it'll flip back and forth. But what it's doing is it's actually taking a simple detail and running it all the way up the side. So we get a little more detail. This is actually a little detail component that repeats itself and goes all the way up as long as we draw that line. We don't have one for CMU. So if we wanted to see the CMU block, um, right now the way this wall type is made is that it has CMU on the inside. So right there, six inches of CMU, even though it really should be five and five-eighths. Um, so with that, it shows up as a hatch pattern that's assigned the CMU. What we might want to do is make a repeating hatch pattern for for this. So to do that, we first have to see if we have um, the detail item of CMU in here. Does not appear we do. So since we don't, we're going to insert it. We're going to insert load family. Let's 
would be under detailed items, masonry and uh, unit masonry. I'm sorry, not unit masonry, concrete unit masonry, CMU. So we can see the side of it. So that's what we want. We want the section. We don't want an elevation or we don't want it in plan, although repeating details do work in plan too. So we're going to do the two core section, Hit open. And now we have different sizes in here. So let's make another repeating detail. We go to annotate component, repeating detail component. Right now we only have brick, so we're going to edit the type. And we're going to duplicate it. And we could do CMU. And I'll make sure it would be clear that it's 6 inch CMU. And then we should be able to, yeah, see we're finding it in here already. I assume it's going to be the 6x8x8, eight by eight by eight, but we'll find out. And sh this one should repeat every 8 inches. Alright, so now we're on the CMU, repeating detail. We click, and it looks like, I'm using the space bar to flip from side to side. It looks like it's working. as high as we can go, and then the spacing doesn't really work out with where the floor comes in. Go the rest of the way up. So something this might tell you is it might tell you that it might be worthwhile to make this wall just slightly taller. So if I do a line, I should be able to make... Nope, didn't get that right. Make my wall slightly taller so that it actually courses out a little bit better. Of course, it doesn't course with the brick now, so you can make make up your own determinations on what to do there. Um, the CMU is, is being cut and showing with a really heavy line. Um, you can edit the family, the detail family, to fix that. But what I would do is just select these two. Override by element, and we can actually override the projection lines and say that it shouldn't be anything more heavy than a number two line weight. There we go. There is a three eighths of an inch difference because the the wall type has six inches for CMU, and CMU six inch CMU really is five uh, five and five eighths. So we could also edit this wall type to be a little more accurate. All right, another thing that sometimes helps is to see what's happening is type TL for thin lines. So that way we can make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. All right, so wall should align there to there. Alright, so that's a little better. I can type thin lines again, see my line weights. Alright, so there's lots of things that we can start adding detail to. Um, for one, the, these are, uh, I believe, wood joists. Yeah, it's a 2 by 10 joist. Um, but they're not showing any of the actual joists. So if you have not modeled this, but you want it to show up in a section, what you can do is we can import those in too. So let's go insert, load family. We're still going to stay in the detail items area because we're working in 2D, so I'm going to stay in the detail items folder. And um, this would be wood, wood framing. We are nominal cut sections. And uh, we're looking for a 2 by 10 I believe. So this one. You can hold down Control and load in more of these at once if you wanted to. But make sure we get the 2 by uh, 10 section. All right. Once you have that, they again show up down here under Detail Items. And Nominal Cut Lumber Section 2 by 10. I can just drag it over. And you can see that you can start to detail this up a little bit. In this case, 
if this is really wood, we wouldn't be putting CMU on top of it. So we could delete this and edit it so that this CMU comes all the way up. That's more likely what's going to be happening. You can space these out every 16 inches or so. So we have a little context of um, how that's being constructed. Obviously only draw them this way if the structure spans this way. If they're coming over and you'd probably just uh, draw the base plate for them to attach to and not show it like we're cutting through. And again, if this line weight is a little too thick for you, we can select it, override graphics and view by element, <clears throat> and projection lines. Let's see. Let's see if we make this one a three. Actually, no color override. All right, it's still dark, but not as dark. All right. So now, to keep adding a little bit more detail to this, right now. This doesn't make a lot of sense. Our earth pattern is uh, is not coming all the way up to the bottom of our sidewalk out here. Also, we really should have a base detail for what this brick is landing on. I'm not going to get into that, but what we could do to fix at least the earth is um, we could draw a filled region. So if you go to the annotate tab and go to region, filled region, there should be... Something we can use below ground. Doesn't look like there's an earth one on here. So what we could do is we can create it. So let's edit type of gravel. Let's duplicate. Call it earth. And here we have the foreground fill pattern is gravel drafting. Drafting means that the pattern will always show the same. No matter what view you're in, at what scale you're in, it always shows the same pattern. So that do that when you're representing something like gravel or earth. Uh, model is if it's a two by two ceiling or a herringbone pattern or some kind of brick pattern where the pattern always remains the same size. So it actually have a size associated to it. In this case, we're representing something. We're representing earth. So we're going to select earth, hit OK, and hit OK. And what you can do now is you can select the line type that you want to draw around the edge. I think in this case, I am going to make this one solid. And then we can start to draw in what's missing. What you can also do is if you don't want to have a line weight around the edge, you can select all of that and do invisible lines. And it should just fill in what's missing. Yeah. That's the thing about drafting patterns. They kind of are always the same pattern, so if you overlap one on top of another, their patterns will line up. All right, we still have some space down here that probably should be gravel, uh, gravel put underneath the slab. So, again, if you don't have it all modeled correctly, that's okay. We can come in and we can add a little bit more detail later. So, in this case, I will do... I think I'm still going to do invisible lines. I'm going to draw four inches of something. Use my align tool to align the end of it like that. Hit OK. It's going to make it dirt again, because that, or earth, because I didn't tell it what to do. But now I'm going to swap it out with gravel. So that's on a gravel bed. And we can always draw more earth to fill in down here. Um, Another thing we can do is we can say, well, you know, the gravel is going to be down here. And then we would have insulation in here. We would do some kind of uh, rigid insulation. Probably wouldn't be two and three quarters, but this is just giving you an example. Oh, we don't have insulation loaded in either. All right, so. For now, we make it into Earth. I'm going to edit type, duplicate, rigid insulation. 
and we'll just change that pattern. And this should typically be uh, rigid insulation. There we go. And then we have rigid insulation in there. Um, other drafting tools you might have, if depending on what, what you're cutting a section through, if this was a, a uh, stud wall, you could add insulation. If you're doing bad insulation, you can add it just like this. It, it's a built-in repeating detail that Revit has. That's how you would add it in. We're not going to do that here because uh, this is actually a CMU wall. But what I do want to do is select this and just see what it's made up of. Oops. Got a lot of airspace in there. What we might want to do is add some insulation in here. Should be two inches worth right there. Reduce our airspace down to an inch and a quarter so the wall stays the same size. Then I'm going to change the substrate that this is made out of. And I'm going to switch it. Let's see this rigid, rigid insulation. All right. Hit OK, OK. The wall moved on me a little bit. I might have gotten my uh, math math wrong. Let's see. That might have had to have been an inch and three quarters. OK. OK. That's better. All right, so what, what it added here was this layer of insulation right here. So this is a little bit more accurate of a cavity wall. All right, and then other things you can add in later. Um, we can obviously build a parapet cap in 3D. But let's say you didn't want to. You wanted to just draw one in. We actually use sand to represent stone. You could just draw a filled region. And we can actually control the height and everything here. So let's say we're um, four inches on the front. We slope backwards a little bit. Trim that off. OK. And what I did was I did not give it a, a edge boundary because I was still drawing it as invisible lines. But what I'm going to do here is actually just give it an edge boundary on three sides. And I'll probably make it three solid. See how that holds up. But then what you probably don't want is you don't want a dark line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the line work tool. It's under view. Actually, I don't even remember where line work is. It's under modify. I don't know where it is because normally I just type LW. There it is. Line work. Click on that, and what you can do is you can override any model line. So if we wanted this to be a lighter line in here, I can make it a one solid, click on it, and it becomes lighter. And what that does is it lets you give a little more hierarchy to the, your pieces on here. So like these detail elements, I can override them. Again, to be a little bit more narrow. And this is projection lines that would be overriding in this case. There. And maybe a 2 to a 3 is not enough, and we want to make our cut line thicker. You could type LW and say, well, I want most of my cut on the, along the edges to be same thing in any of these model elements here for the main pieces we are cutting through to make it clear what we're doing. And anywhere that does not fill in, 
the way that we want it to. We can simply draw lines. In this case, it looks like our hatch pattern is crossing our line thickness a little bit. Let's just pull it back. But <clears throat> there's nothing that stops us from drawing lines. So also on the annotate tab is detail lines. And these are the same lines that we had made. We're going to go to five solid. I can draw lines. So you want to complete that. We wanted to draw in details that aren't there yet or are just too detailed the actual model. You can draw those in. In this case, I think we made this a three. I'm going to come back up it to a five. So it matches the rest. All right. And then the next step of uh, doing a, a detailed wall section is we're going to add some notes. We have a few different options. But for the most part, in, in, in a studio setting, we're going to do the text note. If you're in an office, office setting, you might keynote it. And keynoting is a whole different world. We won't go into that now. So right now, we'll do a text note. And then you can start calling things out. So um, So what happened there is my my text got outside of this bo this box, uh, so it disappeared. And you might wonder where to go. What, why is it not there? If we come down in sections, you almost always want to turn off annotation crop. Hit apply. All right. So now our cast stone. Well, it's not power pitch. Cast stone coping. Let's get that right. Also, this text is really large. Um, Typically, when noting things up, I might recommend 332nd. Uh, that's a good size. You can make it a little bit longer. We can move it around by the, the pulls. But then, to make an arrow, you can click up here. You could say, I want it off the left side, or I want it off the right side. And then you can subtract it by hitting this one, which will remove the last one you added. You can't really tell which one to remove. So let's get this text right first. This is a pretty spindly little little leader here, an arrowhead. So to change that, we click on the text and edit type. Letter leader arrowhead. We do not want it to be an arrow 30 degrees. I think we want it to be a filled. Oh, we don't even have that in here. Let's see. Yeah, huh. I guess we might have to load some more stuff in. All right, so so to make this arrow the right size that we want it to, um, the way we would do that is we would go to Manage, Additional Settings, Arrowheads. So we already have the arrow 30 degree. We know we don't want it to ever look like that, so we don't even need to necessarily duplicate it. I'm just going to say arrow is closed. And then hit OK. All right, so that looks better, but it's not quite what I want. So come back, arrow, and I'm going to fill the tick so it's filled. That's a little better. You can also control the font. If you don't like Arial, you're going to hit Edit Type. And uh, this is just called Arial, so we can duplicate it and call it whatever you want, or just call it um, typical note, so that you just know that's the one you use, and you can change the font right here to anything you want. Century Gothic is not necessarily, oops, it's not Century. Century Gothic is a pretty nice font. Just a little thinner than, than Arial. All right, so cast on coping. You can have that noted on there. And we can call out the the remaining pieces of the construction.
All right, do our six inch. And you can call out exactly what your uh, construction types are. Um, you do have the option of doing an orthogonal leader. You can also choose if you really wanted to. Let's see if I duplicate this. You can choose to do a curving leader too. Just depending on what. I normally don't recommend mixing both. Do one or the other. I normally like orthogonal. <clears throat> We're going to call out everything. So. And this is how you would note up your drawings. Um, the nice thing with the, the noting in Revit compared to AutoCAD is if you change your scale down the road, let's say we want this to be three quarters, all the notes change themselves. You probably still want to move them in a little tighter to the model. Um, but you could see as the scale changes, the line work changes, and the uh, text changes. Also, that the lines and the text always print at the same scale for each type. Let's flip it back to a half inch. And we can bring in all kinds of other detail components um, that you can you can imagine in here. So let's load, just to see, we brought in the rough cut flooring, but you have all kinds of different things like um, specifically steel you can bring in under metals. You can bring in all kinds of I-beam sections and things like that for pieces that you don't necessarily have done or little miscellaneous metal angles that you probably wouldn't spend time modeling but you want to show in a detail. This is where you'd bring them in. So code form steel framing, that's your, your standard studs, structural steel framing, this is where you can get your um, angle shapes. So if you needed any of these angle steel shapes, C shapes, or wide flanges, you can find them in here. And that is the very basics of putting together a simple wall section.